101. This is session five. We're going to talk today about reliability metrics. Hi, Ricky Smith. You know, Peter Drucker, the great industrialist, stated, you cannot manage something you cannot control, and you cannot control something you cannot measure. I think this gets to the heart of what many companies struggle with. I, I, I recommend you get this, take this example and post it on the wall and use it as your watchword that you follow because you must be able to measure things in order to control them and measure them to the right things. And we're going to talk about these reliability metrics. First thing we're going to talk about is leading metrics. Leading metrics lead to results. And, they, and the results are lagging metrics or lagging KPIs. So understand what I have listed in front of you are not encompassing of all the reliability metrics you may need. These are just some examples I wanted to use. On leading metrics or KPIs, the percentage of coverage by predictive maintenance. So what percentage of your assets are covered by predictive maintenance? I think that's key. And the percentage of a completed PMs on time using the 10% rule. And the 10% rule is simple. is that it, it must be done, PM must be done within 10% of the time frequency or it's out of compliance. In other words, if you have a PM that needs to occur, needs to take place once every 30 days, you have three days to do it in or you're out of compliance. It's okay to be out of compliance as long as it's not a critical asset. And maybe you need to rank your assets based on criticality. Next, a chart detail of faults by types. Why are you having the most faults with, the most failures on your equipment? You know, that's, that's, put them on a chart and put them on, post them on the board so you can look at them. Because once your maintenance people see why you're having the most failures, it's typically a common thread. And so if you have fault codes and cause codes and action codes on your work orders, they should be used 100% of the time, not 50% not of the time or once in a while, like I hear from some people, but 100% of the time. Because as Aristotle said, you know, excellence is a habit. Now, trending PM labor hours versus emergency labor hours. I know those of you that know me say, Ricky drives this one crazy, but do, do you use it? And if, and if you're not capturing those labor hours, and you can't trend them, then maybe you need to start by educating your people on why they need to capture labor hours in the work order system. Next is rework. Rework is not a negative metric. It is a positive metric. We learn from it. We do not bring people in and discipline them based on rework. We use rework to help us drive the right behavior, and that is less rework. Let's talk about now lagging metrics. Like I say, there's a lot of other leading metrics and, and reliability, but, but I'm not going to cover all those today. Let's talk about lagging metrics. Asset health report. You can see that over to the far right. And that is the percentage of assets that have no defects. In other words, using predictive technology or preventive maintenance, preferably more predictive, but we cannot, if we do not identify failure or an asset. So if 97% of your assets are defect free, your equipment ought to be running very well, ought to be, have a high reliability. And this is key to knowing how well your operation is running. This is a number one report and it should be trended, as you can see to the far right. Integrated condition status report. We call it the Reds Report or the Bad Actors Report. You know, what are the bad actors? What, what bad actors are reoccurring? What's the common thread between the bad actors? You need to know that. What's the criticality of the assets? Because I've seen very bad actors that are not very critical. The equipment, they consider very, everybody's focusing all their time on one piece of equipment that is, the criticality is zero. Hello, is there a problem here? Let it go RTF or run to failure. Put a big sticker on it, RTF. So nobody gets excited about it when it's, you know, running a failure. Next is mean time between failure. If you need an MTBF user's guide, I've got one developed a long time ago. A lot of people have helped me with it and added to it. It's great. So if you need one, send me an email. 
Next thing is the overall equipment effectiveness. Now, many companies tell me, well, you know, we don't measure quite right. And, you know, they have all the excuses in the world. You know, we'll just put that on the excuse list and make that number one. Because that's the number one thing I hear from companies. Well, we just don't measure quite right. Well, there are softwares out there that can reach in and grab the data from so many different sources. It's, in, it's incredible. There's one I know of right off the top of my head called Informants on Demand. Informants on Demand. It does it. It pulls it, reaches in, and grabs the data and gives you the OE. Because we want to know where our losses are. We need to know where our losses are. And, and that is part of a lag in metric. It definitely is. Because in maintenance and reliability, we want to reduce them. And in process reliability, we want to reduce them or eliminate these, these losses. Going back to leading metrics lead to results. Lagging metrics are the results of the leading metrics. You know, join our KPI users group. It's only one hour every other week. You send me an email. There's my email. Big letters. And I'll tell you how to get started. And I'll tell you, it's a great group because we get a lot of interaction from different people. I'll put slides up, but the slides only have to stimulate conversation. And many times people share their, their metrics with others. In fact, we've got a download site where we actually put them on there. So if you become a member, you can go to that download site and actually look at other people's metrics. Thank you very much for your time. Hope you enjoyed this part. And hopefully I will see you in Reliability 201, which should be out shortly. You have a great day. If you'd like to send me an email, you see it below. And look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you. Goodbye.